In today's video, we are going to learn about a topic called interfaces. Interfaces are a very abstract concept and help us create a set of methods which can be applied in specific scenarios in different ways. So first we're going to talk about what an interface is, how to create one, how to implement one, and then we'll talk about how an interface is different from a class. In class the next day, we will go through some specific examples to help solidify these concepts. So first of all, what in the uh, world is an interface? Well, an interface is going to allow the programmer to specify method headers only without specifying the actual code that the method would implement. And these are useful when there are a variety of classes that have similar needs but different implementation. Like I said, this is a pretty abstract idea. So some common examples of where we see an interface to use would be when you think about different actions that happen that are all implemented differently. For example, when we find the area of shapes, we have found area of shapes for a long time and all different shapes have a different way of finding their area. However, the actual trait of finding area or um, the idea of finding perimeter is a common idea, it's just implemented differently. So in this case, we could create an interface called shape and this interface would have methods to allow us to find area or perimeter where the programmer would specify different code depending upon the shape. And we'll actually do this in class when we do some class programming. Another example for an interface would be Paychex. Anybody who has a job gets paid, but there are different ways to get paid. Some people are paid by the hour. Some people are paid the same check every Friday. Some people are paid twice a month. Some people are paid based on commission. So we could have an interface with methods called pay employee or calculate paycheck. And those methods would have different code depending upon the type of employee the person is. Lastly, another example we can think about is service to vehicles. All vehicles have some type of service plan, whether it's oil change or um, tires or whatever it may be, and the type of service is different. And so um, these are just a few examples to help us see where having an abstract idea can be helpful for a programmer. Okay, so here are some ground rules for interfaces. First of all, they cannot be instantiated. That means that you um, cannot create an object of this type. It is so abstract that it does not make sense. You, you just can't create an object. It doesn't make sense. All of the methods in the interface have to be public. Um, when we, okay, as I was saying, all methods in an interface cannot be private. They have to be public. And the reason why they need to be public is because when the programmer creates code for the interface, they will provide the code here. If those methods were private, then the programmer would not be able to provide the code needed. Um, in order for an actual class to implement an interface, they do this by stating so in the class header, and then you have to provide implementation for each abstract method. So this is very important. If a class declares in its class header that it implements an interface, it must define all the methods named in the interface. And this is the part that seems kind of silly, but we have to remember it. Even if the methods have no code in them, they must be written in the class code. That's it. We would have to have empty method headers. Without having this in place, the code will not compile. Okay, so how do we actually create an interface? In this example, we're just going to show you the general syntax of how an interface would look. So first of all, instead of saying public class, we say public interface. And interface is a reserved word. And then in this case, doable is the actual name of the interface we created. Here I have four methods and these methods are all abstract. None of them have code and they have um, semicolons at the end of each line. And so what this tells Java is that I'm essentially telling you the four methods that we must write if we want to implement this interface. 
Okay, so now that we've talked about how to set up the code for an interface, notice that this code is very, very short. It'll always be short. When we go to implement the code, that's where we'll start seeing a little bit more length to it. Okay, so now we have another class that is going to implement the doable interface. So this class right here is called can do. Gotta love all these lovely names I came up with. And we are going to implement the doable interface. And doable is the name of the interface that we are implementing. And each method that is listed in doable must have method definition in this class, even if those um, methods are empty. So even if uh, this was all that I had written and I just put whatever, it would still be enough. I have to have all of these method headers. Now notice that my class is allowed to create its own variable. So when a class implements an interface, we can have variables, we can have its own methods, we're going to have its constructor, we're going to do everything that we've been doing all along. The only difference is that if we say that this class implements an interface, then we have to also include the code for the methods in the interface. All right, so a little bit more to build on this. Um, just to kind of uh, drive everything home, a class can implement multiple interfaces. If there are multiple interfaces, then they will be separated with commas. So for example, this class many things implements two different interfaces and we just separate them with commas. And we must include all methods of both interfaces. We can also include additional methods that are not in either one of those interfaces. So again, we can create a regular class just like we've been doing, and then we can enhance the class by adding the methods of this interface. So you might be wondering, well, how is an interface different from a class? There are a couple of key traits that make them different. So first of all, in an interface, all the methods are abstract, automatically public, and don't have any code in them. The next thing that's important to recognize is that instance variables are not allowed. You can only have constants. And lastly, you cannot instantiate an object of an interface. Since we can't instantiate an object, that's why we can't have instance variables. So basically we could think of this that an interface is a generic idea that will be implemented with actual code later by the programmer. Um, interfaces are a heavily tested topic on the AP. There is usually um, a free response question related to interfaces, which is why we go into um, a lot of detail on them. Some programmers find that they don't really ever write code with interfaces. It just kind of depends on what you're writing and for what purpose. For those of you that have an interest in graphics, if you do start using graphics or trying to learn any of it on your own, you will see a lot of interfaces um, within graphics code and a lot of methods that you have to provide even if you don't have code for them. So that's another reason why it is helpful to talk about these interfaces. All right, we will go ahead and finish the notes in class and take a look at an example for an enemy interface and we will talk about how different characters that are considered enemies all have common features or traits and we will create a specific class for Darth Vader which implements the enemy case. So we will do that the next day in class. All right, that's it.